Now we're going to look at another circuit, very similar to the previous ones we saw where we charge uh, our C circuit. We have a resistor and a capacitor, but this time we're going to actually take away the battery. So we're going to start with the same circuit we had before, and we charge up this capacitor until it gets its full value. And then we'll take the battery out. So we're left with a charge capacitor and a resistor. So let's take what we know from uh, the past circuit um, circuits and see if we can apply the same stuff to it. As I said, the voltage has been removed and we already have a charge on the capacitor. And initially there's going to be a zero current in here because we're setting it static. Since the current is charged, since the circuit is charged, or has changed, apologize, since the circuit has changed, uh, the voltage source now being removed, we have to write down a new loop equation uh, to go along with Kirchhoff's second law, uh, second law, or the loop rule. So we're going to set our current like we did before, current going through the resistor is that way, and we're going to go around in a counterclockwise or in a clockwise manner. So we start here, and we see that we go across this resistor, and we get this minus I times R, this voltage drop across this resistor, and then we come across this capacitor and we'll see that we have a voltage drop across the capacitor of minus Q times V. And this all has to add to zero. And again, we know that the current is equal to the change of charge over the change of time. And again, gives us another one of the things we call a first order ordinary differential equation, or ODE. So we see that the change of charge with respect to time is equal to the charge divided by our time constant, or RC. And it has the solution um, where the charge as a function of time is equal to V naught C E to the minus T over RC, and the current corresponds to that of minus V naught over R times E to the minus T over RC. And if we look at what the initial conditions were for this, we started with initially at time equals zero, plug in zero for, uh, for T over here, and we see that we get a charge, an initial charge of VC, with V naught times C, which is just our original charge that was placed on the capacitor. And the solution tells us that this current is going to actually flow, if we look, we see this minus sign here, we originally said the current is flowing from left to right, but really this minus sign says that the current is going to be flowing from right to left. And that kind of makes sense because as we start this circuit, we have a lot of charge built up here, no charge down here, so the charge is going to flow in this direction to try to equalize itself. So actually what happens is the charge flows in the reverse direction from what we originally guessed. Now, if we actually do the plot for this, like we did before, we can see that we start with our charge up at a value of V naught C. This is our charge we put on the capacitor to begin with before we disconnected the battery. And as time goes down, again, we slowly decay off. And we'll notice that this 0.37, or this 37% of its original value, comes in at when we reach the time over here of our time constant. So when we go time constant in, we reach 37% of our original value. And similar to that, the voltage will start at some negative value of V naught over R. Actually, the current will start at a negative V naught over R, flowing in the opposite direction. And it will start to flow pretty quickly in one direction, but as we decay a charge away, again, at this time constant of RC, we drop to 37% of our original value. So the current is going to get smaller and smaller, and less charge is going to be flowing per unit time. And as we said, the current flows in the opposite direction because we're discharging from the capacitor through the resistor.